G'day guys, welcome to G-Man Speaks today. I have a bit of a gem of a video for you guys. It might be a bit of a hard watch at times. This is from a YouTuber called Simone Squared. Apparently she's some form of dating coach slash influencer. I think she might be Australian. I watched it about the first couple of minutes. I don't know 100% what she's going to talk about, but I think it's going to make for some good content for us to discuss, have a laugh at. Hello everyone, welcome to my main channel. If you don't know, my name is Simone Squared. It's actually just Simone. I'm a little bit unhinged because it's currently 11 p.m. at night. I'm in Bangkok in my hotel robe. And I actually filmed this video earlier today, but I'm refilming it. This is my presentation on my dating rules. Now, guys, I know what you're gonna say. Oh my God, I'm so sick of dating rules. Don't do this, don't do that. Men like this, women like that. I hear you. I'm sick of it too. Think of this more as like a guideline. Things I've learned, things that are gonna help you eliminate the losers. Okay, uh, I don't know if she's married or not, but unless she's married and has been married for a number of years, I don't think a dating advice, advice should be taken by young women or women that are maybe 30 years old. I can't see how old she looks with the sunglasses. I'm gonna say around 30, maybe late 20s. But let's get some dating advice. Uh, from a young chick who's probably been out and absolutely had her guts pumped out by many a different Brycey Steve O behind cricket grounds, guys. The VN on top of the cricket pads, right? Guts dug out in the middle of the night while it's raining behind the pavilion. This is the prime target for this. But now they're going to come online and they're going to have a whole bunch of dating tips that change their life. The brokies, the people who oh, waste your time, okay? But before we go into this video, you have to know what you're looking for. If you're looking for a hookup, maybe the things I'm saying won't apply for you. These dating rules more so apply for people who are looking for long-term partners. I'm going to use the term collecting data a lot. And that's going to sound really stupid. So let me explain. I'm going to explain it. She's been out just getting her little tiny tight cheeks clapped by heaps of guys collecting data. Get more with more guys, more interactions, data collection. Not that hard to work out. What I mean by collecting data. So a couple of years ago, I met my friends who are married. They told me before they met each other, they would go on as many dates as possible with people. They wouldn't necessarily like fuck them or date them. Yeah, they they would. would go on dates with them. They went on like between like 30 and 80 dates in a couple of months. And that was literally insane to me at the time when I heard this. I was like, why the hell would you do that? And this is where the term collecting data came in. They said, we're collecting data because they were trying to figure out what they liked and what they didn't. See, if you only have a very small sample size, even 10 people, it's not enough. You've been on dates with 10 people. It's still not enough for you to determine what kind of person <laughs> is best for you. Also, That's it, get out and slut it up, ladies. This is the dating advice you need to have. Gold. Personally, back in the day, I used to have a very rigid list of qualities I wanted in a person. And then as I started to date or meet new people, suddenly those qualities changed and I realized, oh, hey, I actually don't care about this certain, certain thing that I thought I really, really cared about. And you don't know these things until you collect data, until you get those experiences. Until you get your ass smashed behind the um, behind the cricket pavilion a bunch of times and realize, well, hang on, I probably shouldn't be going for this guy anymore. <laughs> uh. So that's what I mean by collecting data. And 2023 is my year of collecting data. Like I dead ass, I meet everyone, especially on holidays. I meet everyone, I collect that data. So yeah, these are things I've learned, things for me, which are like, um, ooh, Thanks for me. You, you can't make this shit up, can you? So how's this dating tips and dating advice that's life changing by an absolute dumpster fire that goes and bangs every other bloke she can think of? Or at least goes on dates with a hundred dudes a year or whatever how many shit is she's gonna say. It's uh how how but this video is at she's got nine hundred and fifty seven thousand subscribers. It boggles my belief. And young girls probably watching this stuff thinking, Wow, she's so profound, I've got to go and do what she does. Me, which are like a guideline when it comes to dating. Red flags, whatever. You know what's funny, guys? I have a video on red flags from like early 2021. And there were so many comment men who were commenting going, oh my God, she's a red flag for having a list of red flags. It's like, wow. Couldn't be more true. It couldn't be more true. Just say you want to keep women subordinate and dumb and not have any <laughs> standards. Rule number one. No talking stages. 
no talking stages and what i personally define as a talking stage is where you are texting someone like all day long every day for a long period of time fuck that shit you, you text them more than you meet up and go for days. Don't go and text someone excessively before meeting up with them. The reason I say this is because you leave room to get attached to someone when you don't even know what they're really like. You can organize a FaceTime call. I think that's much better. But the problem is that people are so different in real life. Yeah. There have been people who are genuinely bad texters or they have bad vibes online. And when I meet them, they're amazing. Like love their vibe. We get on so good. And then there's been the polar- So why aren't you with them still? <laughs> uh. Opposite. Not getting into these talking stages where you're texting all the time. Like, go meet them first. And Guys, dating's a game for girls. That's the long and short of it. There's that many options. There's that much opportunity to go and meet so many different guys and do these things. It's a game. Like they're in, I always call it Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. They're in there. They can do whatever they want. It's fantasy land because- us guys, especially when we're younger, we'll chase and we'll put up with anything and, and do anything just to get a little bit of a sniff. So it's a game for these girls, but she won't be so smug and so entitled and, um, you know, up on her pedestal when she's in her 30s complaining the other way. And then you can determine if you want to start to invest time in them. Maybe after you've met once, then you can text a little bit, call a little bit. If someone doesn't set concrete plans with you, there are no plans. This goes for friends as well. So let's say today's Tuesday. Someone's like to you, hey, like let's do something Saturday. Okay, so Saturday, back of your head now. Come Thursday, you've heard no follow up from them. Maybe you follow up, they don't reply. It's not on, okay? The day of, they'll message you, hey, we're still on for later. Like, no, we're not. You've had all week. Why? What do you mean you've had all week? You made a plan. So why do you need to come and confirm on the Thursday? You already had a plan. That is a plan means it's locked in and two people have committed to meeting that day. You don't, oh, I never used to do the confirmation and a lot of guys do. It makes you look thirsty. Oh, we still on? We still on? Have you haven't changed your mind on me, have you? Just fucking set the date and see him there. I actually had a number of girls say this to me. They go, oh, I wasn't sure if it was still on or what because you didn't confirm. And I said, well, I didn't cancel. So we'll, we confirmed on the Tuesday or the Wednesday. And we confirm for the Saturday or the Sunday or whatever it may be. Nothing changed. So I'll see you there. There's no confirmation bullshit. To confirm and you're not confirming, we're not on. Some people, this may seem harsh, but this is how I view it. I would not waste someone's time like that. Because by- How's it time wasting? Once again, you've made a plan. Not confirming, by following up on the day, you're basically saying, I don't respect your time. I expect you to be sitting around waiting for me. Leaving Mental. your calendar free. Like, hell no, I've got a life. I have things to book into my calendar. Other guys, potentially. You're going to ruin it because you could have some other chads on the back burner that she's um, going to miss out on because of you. But I don't understand this logic. No, the, the person has made a plan with you. It should be in your calendar. There's no need to... How's you wasting... I don't, no time has been wasted here. I don't understand it at all. There's a plan. And while they didn't reconfirm really the plan the day of, I know some people, maybe with anxious personality types, might like doing that. I always found it really strange. Like, we had a plan. Why would I, why would I you know, confirm it again? Weird. You need to give someone adequate notice. It's so disrespectful that someone waits last minute to tell you of a plan. Yeah, even for friends who do this, I'm like, no, we didn't have plans. Anyways, if you've been f***ed over by a man or a woman, maybe you need some therapy. And you know where you should get your therapy from? From BetterHelp. Thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring uh, this video. Go. So, no, we're not better dead. Right, let's let's move into point three. That's another thing. That's why these they, I always find these channels... Um, a disingenuous, right? Because she would have, she's got a big subscriber base, 957,000. I've done a, I've done a few other videos, guys, are going to release soon. They've all got advertisements in them for something. All the women have advertisements trying to sell things to other women, whether it be this one selling mental health therapy. Okay, you got other people selling, um, uh, you know, my, my muscle chef and shit like that. Like, you're the product. So they spin bullshit to you. Okay, rubbish. So they all watch. They put you in fantasy land, and they're hoping to sell you shit. That's how they make a lot of their money. I have no issue with people trying to make money, but be uh, genuine about it. Like I always say, this guys, I'll never run ads on this channel, no matter what. Like I'm not going to be like, oh yeah, oh guys, welcome to G Man Speaks. Oh by the way, um, here's the official. Unless it is this, the official G Man Speaks endorsed and sponsored flashlight. You know, pussy pounder five thousand or whatever. I might endorse that. 
But any other anything, oh, I'm not going to be selling you Muscle Chef. I'm not going to be selling you fucking, I don't know, shaving your balls or whatever it is, Manscaped or whatever. It's not why I'm here, guys. So that's why they sell out and they wonder why people like me then criticize them. Because she's a big, she's got 957,000 subs. This video here's at 200,000. So she'll be making, this video would have made her roughly, and I don't know what her rates are, the old, so you guys should understand how it works. She'll make thousands of dollars from this video. No, there's, there's no problem. There's no doubt about it. Thousands of dollars, but they still want to sell you more shit. Ghosting. If someone ghosts you. You're All right, before we get onto that point, we're going to be halfway through, guys. So uh, if you're enjoying the content uh, and my rants, uh, only for 10k subs, so please sub to the channel and let's uh, j jump on the uh, joint growth journey together. <laughs> Almost lost my words there, which is rare. Uh, and if you do want to support the channel, guys, just watch the videos through, um, like and engage with the channel. Uh, I know it's the same old bullshit that every other YouTuber says, but it's, I say it because it works and that's why they all say it. Uh, I'm not going to try and trick you to do it. The more you watch, the more I get paid. Um, the more ads may play. You can skip those, but I still get paid for that. So I'm not trying to grift you. I'm just telling you, if you do that, it helps me. Let YouTube pay me. You guys don't have to pay me nothing. Back the dead and you move on. Ghosting is the most disrespectful thing someone can do to you because they're saying you're not even worthy of a reply. And in that situation, I would literally not do anything. I've sent my follow-up message, got ghosted. I'm not contacting you ever again. Because they didn't even care enough about you to let you know that the plan is off or to give you an explanation. And while Gert Welcome to the world of a man, and I'm not saying it's good, but how many men would really do this? I'm talking to be the top of the top guys who'd have that many different sluzzers to, jo to juggle that that could be um, something that you do. I've never done that at all, guys. I've never cancelled a day of or ignored them. Or I've never, like, in terms of cancelling five minutes before you go, you might count because you're sick the day before or something like that, yeah. But, but juggling and then fucking them off and uh, ignoring them, no, I haven't done it. I haven't done it. So that's, I think that's more a male problem. Women will never understand if this has annoyed her that much. I would say 50% of dates get flaked. Uh, that's no shit or, or there's fuck around or there's excuses or, or there's um, uncertainty because women are very flaky. So, so go and live in the body of a man or dating app especially for a couple of months and then she'll have no complaints because they got no idea what that's like. Ghosting can hurt. It's honestly one of the best things that can happen to you because you just found out that this person is shitty. The trash literally took itself out. You don't have to do anything. You found out right then and there early on that, hey, they're not worthy of my time. And they're, they're not worthy of my time, but they cancelled and dumped me. So why it hurts for anybody is because really the insult is you weren't even worth telling. You weren't even worth... Um, meeting up with or if they were going to cancel they didn't give a shit about and maybe not stuffing up your plan so let's let, let, let's not listen to female copy or oh, they weren't worth it worth your time no they're the ones who ghosted you so to them you were weren't even worth confirming with so let's just say you know let's just be honest with what that is and that's why it hurts for men too it's fucking sucks too immature disrespectful to give me a reason so let the dead stay dead no games when it comes oh, to yeah. looking for a boyfriend or a long-term partner, no games. I never played any games with people I dated. Like, what's a common game? Texting. Oh, he messaged me three hours late. I'm gonna wait three hours. No. If I'm on my phone and I get your text, I will reply. That's a common That's game. I don't do it. The moment a motherfucker starts playing games with me, I'm out of there. I'm not here for it. Goodbye. Fair, point. Fair point. Okay. If you're dating someone for quite a while, you're in a situation ship, but you could also probably... <laughs> situation ship, talking stages, dating, all dating means. So dating is a game for women. I always say this, like dating is a game. It's a game. So many options. It's like playing uh, Mario Brothers when trying to get to the end level, right? But they always have more continues, more lives, more tries. Dating doesn't mean you're in a relationship or you're exclusive in any way there's any like you've got it dating means you're fucking each other and catch up sometimes that's all that translates to to me dating equals fucking um there's nothing more to it than that people say oh yeah we dated or whatever to make out like it was something more no you just uh, you were the dude's fleshlight or whatever you know, or you use that fucking idiot for meals whatever it was we call them your boyfriend but you've never put a label on it 
you're single. Okay. You are not someone's boyfriend or girlfriend until it's made official. Like if that man wants you, he can put a label on it. And if he doesn't put a label on it, he either doesn't know what he wants, he's a phony, or he doesn't even like you that much. <laughs> Which leads into another point. If or maybe people just don't want to put labels and follow the timeline. There's always a timeline when it comes to dating, especially with women, especially with women approaching this age here, late 20s, probably into early 30s. There's a, there's a certain trajectory, right? There are things um, that happen on, okay? You're doing this whole dating phase, which is just fucking each other, going to each other's house, watching Netflix, just fucking banging the, the holes out of each other. You know, deep throat, anal, double fisting, whatever it is, it's all fun, it's all exciting, right? But then it's going to come to a time where that's going to get cut off. Like, they're going to want a bit more than that. They're going to angle at it either implicitly or blatantly say, if you don't say, like, what are we? They're going to put the what are we talk on you. Most guys crumble um, and go out with women when they cop the what are we talk and end up with a girlfriend they didn't even want. <laughs> so if you cop a, you know, if you cop a, what they call them, ultimatum, that's already, you can fuck them off because if they're willing to walk on you only after a couple of months of you and they've asked you for something and they're not going to get it maybe right away, like a demand of a commitment, then just think about what happens when you're married or something and then they don't want to deal with you anymore. Let's fucking walk on you. So I think they expose themselves pretty early on. So that's a little bit of rant, went on tangent there, right? But men don't really operate in terms of these timelines. Maybe some do. They want to have officials, they want girls to say, you know, Though you want to ask them and you want them to be your girlfriend and all that sort of shit. It's a very feminine thing to do. Let them ask you if you really want to have a girlfriend. But generally these things just can just happen over time. And then a guy will know when he wants to ask her out, not after like two weeks or, two, or one month or whatever. And they're going to start getting really impatient and start asking you what's happening. Because like, hey, I've invested a month. I've invested a month. And time is what's important to women, especially at this age, because that's one month. They could have been out trying to find some other guy to lock down. Like, it's just purely hunting, guys. It's purely hunting, and time is the most valuable currency. That's why women will always say to you, oh, you wasted my time, or this guy wasted my time for three years. How's that a waste of time if you both had a beneficially a mutual uh, good time together? It's because they didn't get the outcome they wanted. They didn't uh, lock in the bag, so to speak. They didn't lock in the commitment. So therefore, all those good times and things where they didn't benefit directly financially was a waste of time. So that language really when uh, really highlights the thought process of women, especially like if you hear women say, you don't waste my time or I don't want my time wasted, guys, like stay away from those types because they're just going to try and rush you into things. If someone ever gives you mixed messages, you start to read into what they're saying. Does he like me? Does she like me? I don't really know. I can't tell. One minute she or he does this. The next minute I don't know what they're thinking. They don't like you that much. Because That's when true. someone likes you, you will know. Yep. And it is a tough pill to swallow. But when you are able to swallow that and get beyond your ego, suddenly the world is so much more simple. We agree. And you can move on. Which can lead into another point about the ego, love bombing. So, what is a love bomber? Someone that, you know, literally excessively bombs you with love or compliments, especially very early on in a relationship. The problem, if you have a big ego, is that you're gonna think this love bombing is real because you'll be like, oh my God, but like, yeah, I am like the most beautiful girl in the world. He's so right to fall in love with me immediately. And I understand when I see TikToks like this, because you know, I fall into that. Love bombing, love bombing is a Brycey tactic. It's the fake nice guy tactic, the lover boy tactic, as I would call it. It's where you just say what you gotta say, do what you gotta do to get some action, because men aren't stupid, they learn. You gotta grease women up, you gotta promise them the world and not deliver if you wanna get in and out for some quick action. Um, I can do a video on Monster hunting basics, if you guys want to know about it. But I used to do that all the time. I didn't give a fuck. If I knew a woman wanted a baby, I would say, yeah, I'm looking, I'm wanting to have a baby. Um, you know, you're looking for the right person. I want to start, you know, you say whatever you got to say to get him into bed. Like, I don't know how it's got a term called love bombing. It's just called being a slimy line bastard. <laughs> but women also do that too. Because I want to get a commitment from a guy and I'll pretend and love bomb and they'll pretend to like love everything you love. They'll find out more about you. You like Collingwood Football Club. They love Collingwood Football Club. They love going to the games and hanging out with Joffa, you know, with his fucking, um, with his grapey uh, gold jacket on waving the things around. She'll go down there and do that. 
she'll lie and love bomb and do all sorts of things. Oh, you like chicken? She likes chicken. You like to breathe there? She likes to breathe there. Oh, she loves all your friends. Your friends are funny. Everything you say, every joke you say is funny. Same shit. It's just the female version of it. That trap sometimes true. Your ego will also prevent you from seeing the truth. And the truth is that if someone is love bombing you so early on, number one, maybe they are insecure themselves and they are really looking for another relationship really quickly. So that's why they're love bombing you. Number two, even worse, it could be that that's just that. Guys, don't do that. Not many guys are love bombing looking for a relationship. Yeah, sure, there are guys out there that might operate in that way. I can tell you just from a, the male mind doesn't work that way. We want to get in, get some action, then work it out. It's going to be women that are doing that. Women that are on the hunt because they want a boyfriend. Their personality. They are the type of person that love bombs. And then that will lead into the third problem. People who love bomb or fall in love quickly, they fall out of love just as quickly. Okay, always date multiple people. The men... I'll throw this word love around. These young ladies, they don't know what love is. I don't even know if I know what love is if I've experienced it. But... What they're talking about is limerence. Guys, look at what limerence is. It's just an, in, it's an intense chemical feeling and that's what drives people to procreate, make stupid decisions like get married within the first fucking 12 months of knowing each other. Limerence is a hell of a drug, guys. It's a hell of a drug. And that's why men do stupid things and it's a chemical that goes into both of the male and female's brains that bonds them together and clouds judgment. And so otherwise the fucking human race wouldn't exist because we wouldn't have procreated enough. Go look it up if you want to know more about it. Limerence. You're going to hate that I said that. Actually, I've said this before. Date multiple people. Because you keep your options open. You don't obsess over one person. And then when you finally are picking the person you want to date or make your partner. Exclusively for females mostly. Okay. Most guys do not have this luxury. Let alone have one girl that could be a potential partner. Let alone a fucking stable. It's so easy, like she's quite attractive, but she's, you know, run of the mill, just Asian bird. Like, I don't mind a bit of yellow, we're gonna be yellow fever guys, but she's nothing special, not a supermodel. She'll probably have fucking 10 million dudes that wanna bang her on, on every dating app that exists. You will have known that you picked the best option. The men really hated that I said that. Someone commented, oh my God, by, but saying this, Simone, you're making it so much harder for men to date and it's already so hard for us to date. Literally say you want to keep women subordinate and easy <laughs> and then get the fuck out of my comments. Subordinate. It's not about being subordinate. It's not being a fucking whore. That's what you're doing. That's the, you, you can't say it's anything different than that as a dating strategy of dating many, multiple different men at the same time. It's slutty behavior. That's just what it is. It's not about being subordinate. Anyway, uh, I'd love to see if this girl's married or not. Probably not. Another rule is if I am trying to take someone seriously, like, you know, relationship type of thing, they have to plan dates. No hanging out. Boring. No hanging out for me. Okay, so the, this is literally every single chick on Bumble and Hinge that's been had their guts blown out in their 20s, now they're in their 30s, and they're making all these rules. This is literally it personified. You'll see this, all this sort of same bullshit um, written in, in dating profiles. It's a straightaway giveaway for slurry. And they say all these things, and guess what? You go and bang them in the VN. No problem. Let's leave hanging out in high school and maybe early college. Not anymore. Don't talk about your exes. Agree. I will not talk about people I've dated. Agree. It's in the past. It's not relevant anymore. Also... If your ex treated you badly and you were telling a new guy this, if he's not a very good guy... Like, women always think, oh yeah, my ex, the guy I dated for fucking two weeks, yeah, he's my ex. No, you're not, they're not a fucking ex unless it was something really serious. You know, a longer term, we're like, oh, my ex. No, just some guy you're fucking, he wasn't your ex. I, he could actually see this as an opportunity to be like, oh, she settled for so much less in the past, or she was treated badly, so now I only have to do a little bit better and she'll be so easily impressed. <laughs> and this is just a little tip. If you know go. exactly what you want in a person, you know, you've got a list of qualities, and I'm not talking about like physical attributes necessarily or like material attributes, but what type of person are they? How do they make you feel? How do they treat others? When you know this down to a T, it will make it very, very easy for you to eliminate people because. See, I don't know what my dream partner looks like. I actually, I don't know. I don't really think he about it. He doesn't exist. But I think about his qualities and I think about who he is and how he makes me feel. He doesn't exist. So when I go on a date and I, I'm with someone 
and they don't make me feel for example safe or like i'm emotionally supported with what i'm saying <laughs> and i just get that feeling i now know it's not going anywhere i'm not going to see them again but if i didn't have that list i didn't know what i was looking for then maybe i'd be like oh let's give him a chance so for example when i was 19 i went on a date with this guy and i remember he asked me a question that was very very simple and for some reason i lied like i immediately white lie and i'm not someone that typically lies so the moment i said this i vividly remember in my head i'm like it's over the date's over i'm never seeing him again because i just lied you can't build a relationship off lies and also why did i feel so uneasy around him that with this simple question i didn't want to tell him the truth but you know the more people you what a what a nut case what a head case man and people are taking advice off this woman and she's an expert a dating coach Jeez, louise how far have we fallen, my friends? But women have always told each other rubbish. This is just a Jedi High Council, as I refer to it, guys. It's the women sitting around the coffee table with the Tim Tams. It's just on the internet now. Women can do this to, you know, a large, large audience now. This is just rubbish that they would have just said. It would have, you know, poisoned the minds of a small group of women. Now it's just pff, across the world. And that's why I do a lot of these commentary videos on this kind of stuff, because it really does... It's almost like research, You're almost like the Slurry Research Institute and trying to understand how they think and how they work and critique and, you know, um, authentically challenge the positions they come up with. It isn't about being nasty or mean or anything like that. But it is it is mind-blowing just the way, just how different they are and how different we are from women and how we think. And that's why there's so much divorce. There's so much destruction in relationships. I'm not saying men get off scot-free. There are a lot of fuckwits out there as well. So... All right, guys, that's probably enough for me. If you want to watch the rest of the video, I'll link it in the video description. Go check her out. Give her a sub if you want to be another one of the 957,000 and first um, subscriber. Thanks, guys. Once again, 27 minutes. It's a good investment, and I appreciate your time if you've made it this far. Thank you.